Good morning, everyone. I am on my way to uh, pick Chosen up from Port Canaveral Cruise Terminal. It's about two hours away. I woke up this morning and Journey had a flat tire. Good morning. Woke up to a flat tire again on Journey. I don't understand. These are brand new tires. Second flat tire within a matter of a few weeks. Um, it was on the, this is on the right, the passenger back. I think the other one was the driver's front. So when I get back, I will have to try to resolve that issue. It's like it's always something every day. Like I never have a day that I don't have something to do. Um, but it is what it is. So since we have a two hour ride, I thought why not do story time? So welcome, come on into Shell's Corner. Now, Shell's Corner is where I discuss something and it isn't always like um, positive. It's just a matter of story and different things that happened to me during my life. This is a true story. I think I was about 22 or 23 years old. So, um, first of all, I'm going to, the name and relationship has been changed to protect the guilty. Just say it like that. Um, I've been knowing this person, well, they've been knowing me my whole entire life. So, I didn't think nothing of it when I received a phone call. It was probably like on a Wednesday or maybe a Tuesday because let's just say her name is Candace and let's say Candace is my friend. So Candace calls me on Wednesday and says, hey, Shell, um, what you up to? Nothing really. Um, I'm going to go somewhere in a few days. Well, I'm going to St. Louis in a couple of days. Um, I got to take care of some business. Would you like, can you ride with me? I'm like, mm, okay. I'm, let me see if I can find somebody to keep the kids. So, she was just like, oh, we're not going to be that long. It'll just be a few days. And I was like, okay. So, that was that. So, the day came. She came to pick me up. We're on the highway, you know, from, I think St. Louis might be like maybe two and a half, maybe three hours from where I was living in Indiana at the time. Um, so, you know, we just basically, a basic road trip, riding, enjoying music, talking, okay? So we get to St. Louis and um, we check into the hotel room she goes into the bathroom and she's in there for a little while and she comes out mind you I don't really think that we even had anything to eat because she was like well I'm going to go um, get, see if they have some vending machines and get some snacks and I was like okay I was on the phone so I really wasn't paying too much attention anyway so I'm on the phone and hours and hours and hours went by. And finally I realized like she just said she was going to go get some snacks from the vending machine. And she's still gone. Now we might have got in around maybe 4 p.m. This at this time it may have been like 10. And I, I'm young, so I didn't even think to call and be like, where are you? Like, are you okay? I didn't even think that, you know? I'm just like, okay, she's grown, you know? Maybe she's handling business that she said that she had to do. Maybe she went on ahead and started. 
So, I guess I end up falling asleep. So, Candace comes back into the room. I don't know what time it is. I didn't even look, but she came back into the room. And we were like, at an, we were at an extended stay. An extended stay hotel. And she walked over there to where they had the stove. And they had the little metal, um, where the fan is or whatever. It's like a filter thing. It's, it's metal and it's silver. So she pulled that down and she had some money in her hand. It was like a wad like this. And she put it up there and put it back up. And I just looked. I didn't say anything. I was just like... Plus, I was just waking up. I was like, what is she doing? And then I went back to sleep. So the next morning, we got up. And... Um, we just chilled for a little bit. And she went out into the hallway. And um, she was like... Well, first she was like, oh, I got to make some calls, um, some calls or whatever. I know you don't want to hear all that, girl. So she went out to the hallway and did her call. So she came back in. And this was probably like maybe 11. And she was like, um, I got to um, run and handle this business now. Um, we gonna, we going to do that real quick. And then we're going to go get something to eat. And I said, okay. So... We got in the car and we drove. We drove about an hour and 20 minutes from St. Louis. It was in some some city. To this day, I still don't know where I was at because back then, um, I don't think we were like really using maps and, and um, all of that. So, you know, I don't know even know where we were. So we pulled up to this hotel. In half a mile, keep left at the fort to stay on Florida 417 Toll North. And um, she was like, I'll be back. She was like, I'll be back in a little bit. Just go on and get yourself something to eat. And I was thinking like, you said we were going to go grab something to eat together. Keep left at the fort to stay on Florida 417 Toll North. And... She was just like, hey, I won't be long. I won't be long. By the time you get yourself something to eat and then come back, then, for 10 miles. then I'll um, I'll be ready. So it was like, like I said, I was 23, 22, 23, around that age. And I wasn't really that familiar with like driving around on unknown highways and interstates and stuff. So... I was in an unknown place and they're like the way the highway was it was like you it was high up and you could see it all under you and it was like all different it was like big it was a lot and I was just like wow so I drove and it and like I said we drove an hour and a half out the way so it really wasn't anything real so I drove for a little while and then I was like I can't find anything to eat like I didn't see any places to eat and I turned back around. So I turned back around and somehow I found the hotel. So I pulled up into the parking lot and I parked. And I was looking around because when I had left, the parking lot was almost empty. So it was very noticeable to me because there were weren't really any cars and now when I come back there's a black car I park and there's a black car or a black park a black car pulls up to me and there's a black SUV and then another black vehicle like I was like there's a, all these black vehicles so I'm just sitting in the, in the car and I'm looking on my phone or whatever then all of a sudden I look up and I see like six to eight people running to the car, running to the car and they come up, they put their badges all on the window, all around the car, police, police, police I'm like, oh my god so I, I open the door and they're like, are you Michelle? and I'm like, yeah and they were like, come with me, and I'm like, wait a minute for what? and they were like do you know 
know Candace? And I was like, yeah, I know Candace. I'm waiting on her to come out. And they were like, so who are you? What are you? Are you her driver? And I was like, driver? I'm not. Uh, she just told me to go get something to eat. She told me she went in there to handle some business. And she will be out shortly. They were like, well, come in here. Come come on with me. So I, I we walk in there and we go up the elevator. And while we're walking, they're just like, you know, having casual con casual conversation. Like, hey, what are you what what are you guys up to? And how long you guys been here? And and where are you staying? And I'm like, uh, we got here yesterday. She asked me to ride with her. And you know, that's my friend that I've known my whole entire life. So I I came with her. And they were like, okay. So they were like, well, Candace is being arrested for prostitution. <laughs> I boohooed. I started crying. Like, I couldn't hold back the tears. Like, I, tears started running down my face and I started boohooing. I was like, what, what, what? And they were like, come in or whatever. So, we went into a hotel room. It was set up like a police station. They had cameras everywhere. They had phones. They had, it was just so much stuff in there. And I was like, wow, because I never had seen anything like that. I'm like, dang. So I'm thinking to myself, this stuff is really true. What they, you know, say that they have those, uh, they have um, the substations in places. So they got to asking me questions like, um, you know, uh, do you know what she's doing here? And I was like, no, I mean, I just know she's handling business. And then they were like, well, um, ask, just asking me like how old I was. They asked me a whole bunch of questions and then they were like, well, okay, your, your stories match up. So we're gonna let you go, but we're taking her in. And I was started crying like how they asked I'm like, how do I know how to even get back to the room? Because we drove an hour and a half and I don't know where we are. So they were really the police were really nice. They told me, you know, directed me the best they could to back how to get on the interstate and all of that. So they let me talk to her before she, um, before, um, they let her, well, before they locked her up, they were like, um, well, she was like, yes, um, girl, whatever, they just, they just gotta do this, they said, I don't even know what's going on or what happened, but, and then she was like, just go back to the room, and you, up above the stove, get some money get that money and I was like okay so she was like just wait on my call I'm, I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna be gone long wait on the call and I'm gonna call you and come pick, to pick me up so I got the call about I, well, I made it back to the room I got the call about one o'clock in the morning to go pick her up from downtown St. Louis I guess that's where the jail was so I went to pick her up and I really didn't say much. And she was like, um, explaining to me what happened. She was like, well, um, I, I came down here to do. She, two miles, take exit 26 toward Coco. She never said what it was. She didn't never let that come out of her mouth. But she was just like, um. At home, I get $75 an hour just to show up, and then it's $75 extra each hour. She was like, I don't even I don't even do nothing. These men are just lonely and they want company, so they're just happy that you show up. And I was just like, okay, you talking to Boo Boo the Food. 
and she was like um but they had like a promotion and they was like for if you go to st louis you know because they needed some workers that you'll get two hundred dollars for just showing up and then 75 dollars an hour after that and she was just like i just went in the room and um I just sat down and talked and all of this and basically saying she didn't do anything and I was like well how was you arrested for that then if you didn't do anything in half a mile take exit 26 toward Coco and she was just like they they just had to do it they had a sting or whatever but she was like how I was able to get out was because when I went in the room I just sat down and he put the money on the the, the uh, nightstand, so nothing was discussed about Take money. Twenty six. Then keep right at the fork. Nothing was discussed about what I needed to do. So when I let when I was gonna leave out, I um was just gonna grab the money and go. And I was like, oh. Keep right at the fork. So it was an undercover police officer, and she was just like, yeah. So then after after telling me that story and after being arrested, she tried to recruit me. She tried to recruit me into doing that. And I was like, honey, no, I'm not doing that because I'm scary. I don't, I don't play that stuff. And she was like, okay, well then they also have um like a call call center rep person that they were hiring for too. And I was like, I'm not. I don't want to be involved in this at all. She was like, yeah, you don't, all you got to do is answer phone calls. Like, you you answer phone calls, you talk to them, you see what they like and, you know, what they want, who they want to send out and, and then you um contact the girls and send them out. And I was like, um, I don't know. I, I mean, I can't, I'm not doing this. Like, I don't know this is illegal, <laughs> put it like that. But she was like, it's not illegal because we're not doing anything. But I was then I started asking her questions, just being curious, not curious because I was gonna do it, just curious as to why she was doing it. And how do people get into that lifestyle and stuff like that. And I was like, so if, what if a guy calls and he says that he wants um, an Asian, like, petite girl? She was, she's black and big, was heavy set. And I, and she was like, girl, they don't care. You just send them whoever. They don't care. And I was like, that's kind of, um, like, daring, like, to do that and dangerous because if they want something in particular and they're asking you for an Asian short lady, a skinny lady, and you come and you're black and big, um, you know, would they be upset or something? She was just like, mm, they just lonely, they don't care. They'll take whatever. And I was like, dang, she, you playing with fire there. Like, I would never. But... <clears throat> Long story short, um, well, we left that day after, and long story short, I learned that just because you know somebody or they know you your whole life does not mean that you can trust them, does not mean that they're going to be completely honest with you, and just because you're getting a free road trip, Michelle, <laughs> you need to learn that, <laughs> Uh, doesn't mean that you should always go just because something's free doesn't mean that it's good and also do birds of a feather truly flock together because like I said I've been knowing this person forever and we was rolling together and the police could have thought that you know it's true like I'm not listening to, to, your, to the story you know what I'm saying you going in too but I, again, thank God for situations like that because he always, you know, protects me and keeps me because in my innocence, you know, I could have been locked up for something and that, that's, that would have been a terrible charge to have on my record. But I'm glad that a lot of things that I went through in my young years, I can look back now and laugh at because I really learned and went through some stuff, y'all. But I just wanted to share that little story.
story with y'all. Hey, so I just got back from picking Chosen up. I was expecting him to drive once I made it there after driving over two, two and a half hours. Then he got in and he was tired. So he'd been up partying and he didn't get any sleep. So I had to drive back. So I'm just like relaxing a little bit before I go and go see about this tire. So he did find one of the electric tire pumps. So I'm gonna try to see if I can put some air in it and make it to the tire shop. If not, I'm gonna have to go to plan B, which either wait till hubby get home or yeah, it would have to wait till he gets home so he can take the tire out. I mean, I'm not going to take the tire off when I have a capable husband, even though I have to wait. So I don't really have anywhere that I need to be. And there's also another vehicle here. But I did want to show you guys that I got another package. Amazon package. So I haven't looked to see what it is yet. It says, a gift for you to help you on your journey. I love your content. Enjoy your gift from Cinnamon. Thank you, Cinnamon. This is a pretty um, bag that it's in. It's really nice. Let's see. Yep, and they have even a, included a note, a tag on the bag. This is a very pretty bag. Pretty. Let's see what's in here. Oh, can't even get this thing open. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh my God, no. I got some, now it's a bug. What is going on? <laughs> I got some hiking shoes. Oh my God, thank you so much. I've never owned a pair of hiking shoes before. And I got some hiking sticks or trekking poles from another journey buddy. So I did put these in there because I plan to be like going on some mountains and different terrain that I'm not used to doing. So I thought that that would be nice because I, I do plan on um, getting out hiking more. So I'm, I'm glad I'll be able to wear these and use my um, hiking sticks and then have my microphone. So thank you. Thank you so much. Let me see if I can fit these. I don't have any socks on because I had sandals on. So let's see. And I didn't really know what size to get. Like I really wear a seven and a half, but I was like, maybe I could get an eight since I'm going to be walking. And And they're good. They're like, my feet are narrow, but these, you know, give me some room. And my feet, they feel good on my feet. I think I'm going to walk in them for a few days to see if um, I should keep this size. Which I, I think I should because my, my toe is right here. It's almost all the way up there. But it's just, I'm not used to having loose shoes. These feel real comfortable on my feet. It feel really good. Got my walking shoes. Got my walking shoes. Why they look so huge in the cab? <laughs> oh, they really not this big in person, y'all. Believe that. But yeah, these are super comfortable. Thank you so much. I cannot wait to walk in these. They feel so good. I don't know if they're waterproof or not. Let me see. Um, it just says um, outdoor hiking shoes, lightweight, knit sneakers. So I will keep you guys updated on how my first walk is with these. But thank you so much, Cinnamon. I appreciate it. These will be going to use. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all really love me, and I love y'all too. <laughs> oh yeah, and I'll put the link to these. Um, she got them from my Amazon wish list. She got them from my Amazon wish list. I will put the link for these as well, just in case somebody wants to um get them. I tell you, it's always something. Always something. 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 <laughs> At this point, all we can do is smile. Like, ain't no point in crying about it. Hi, Thomas. It's always something. But at least it's happened in a safe place. And at least I got a little bit of funds if need be. Uh, but I don't really know what's going on with it. Or why. But they'll find out. So, let's see if... I'm going to see if it'll hold air in it. Because it's like all the way flat to the ground. When I drive it, I'm going to go very slow. So I'm about to pump it up now. Okay, I found the puncture is right there. So it must be a, a nail in here or something. You can hear it, the air. So not too close to the the wall of the tire so maybe I'll be able to just get by with getting a patch or a plug but I guess we'll see um hope that you guys have a great day I will see you guys later bye bye